All right, I'm getting ready to watch episode six of season four of Attack on Titan, the final season of Attack on Titan. And at the end of episode five, well, Aaron just showed his whole Titan butt to all of Liberio. He transformed right in the middle of Willie Tiber's play that was telling the truth of the history of the Titans and the Great Titan War and all that sort of thing to all of the dignitaries from around the world, trying to call for like a world war against Parody. And he tossed Willie up, getting ready to eat him, it looks like, like he's maybe getting ready to assume the power of the Warhammer Titan. But then I started thinking, what if Willie's a decoy? What if Willie isn't the Warhammer Titan? And the real Warhammer Titan's just waiting for the chance to like pounce and to ambush Aaron. I don't know, but I'm on the edge of my seat and I just want to see what happens. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh, so it's like a little flashback with Willie and his family, the Tiber family. And he's got like this sad look looking at all those kids that can't go with him on this trip, I guess, to Marley. Or not to Marley, but to wherever, the capital. They don't get to go see their dad's play. I'm assuming that's their father. Wow, and he's kind of saying that like my last farewell type of goodbye. Oh man, those kids are all like up to his kneecap. Oh, I guess that's his wife or something. Or is that, yeah, because there's a lot of tears in her eyes. Like, she knows he is not returning from this journey, it looks like. And it's like he's planning to get attacked during this speech. This guy's playing three-dimensional chess, which I guess is all chess, right? It lives in the real world. Four-dimensional chess. So they're talking about escape plans. They were ready for this move. So something tells me it's not going to go down as smoothly as Aaron wanted it to. This is interesting, clumping these people together to really get them involved in what goes on here. To really make the rest of the world hate Parody, maybe? To hate Aaron? Really been building this international diplomatic network, he says. Spying on Parody pretty well, too. But not watching their own backyard, which is, of course, where Aaron and his colleagues are. So, wow, Willie knows what's going on. And this guy here looks like he was standing as a spy on the street corner. Oh, talking about conspirators. I didn't know there were conspirators. But he makes a good point. You spend a lot of time in war, you're going to make some enemies. So this is all a plan to smoke out the traitors in their midst. Wow. Wow. Aaron has played right into their hands, it looks like. Like he's doing exactly what Willie wanted him to do here. Oh, sacrificing incompetent officers. Oh, and it's given this guy the chance to rebuild the military any way he wants to. But he does, he's not comfortable with the blood price that's going to have to be paid for this. Whoa, Tiber calling his own Eldian folk spawn of the devil. I, I don't know what's up with with this Tiber guy. His own mind seems a little fractured here. Yeah, making a good point. You never hesitate to sacrifice Eldians on the battlefield. Why are you so nervous about sacrificing Eldians now? Maybe Magoth isn't all bad either. I mean, he wants peace. He's the one that wanted to bring back conscription so the Marleans would feel the price of their choices. So Magath not entirely on board with uh, Tiber's plan. Yeah, the plan is to sacrifice Willie here, but something tells me Willie's not really the uh, Warhammer Titan. But he's prepared to die for what he believes in. That's why it's so hard to say he's, he's just evil. I mean, he has nothing to gain from this. It's all indirect. So he's trying to further turn the Eldians in Liberio against the Eldians from Parody. Oh my goodness, killing himself in this game of hatred. This is all to get the world to join Marley in this war on Parody. Sinister to its core. But it's not like he's doing it to increase his own power because he's going to die in this. Maybe he's in that year 13 if he is the Warhammer Titan, and that's why it's so easy. But I don't know. I don't know here. I guess they're really counting on technology being able to take out the Titans too. Okay, here he goes. One big gulp. 
Is that the plan? Oh, down the hatch. People just watching in shock here. They Do they think it's part of the play? If so, that's the best shadow puppet I've ever seen. Look at the blood. That is, they have made Aaron look like a monster there. Wow. So this was all part of Tiber's grand plan. Like I was expecting a fiasco. Not exactly this kind of fiasco. But here during the OP, I'll just take a moment to remind everybody that I do have a Patreon now. If you're watching this on Patreon, you rock. Thank you very much. But if you think you might be interested in supporting me on Patreon, supporting the channel, you want to see what's going on there, there is a link in the video description. The Warhammer Titan is the name of this episode. So I guess we will get to see the Warhammer Titan show himself in some capacity here, right? Okay, now all the madness is broken loose. People got a good look at Aaron's scary face. Now they're all running from the rubble. We got this one guy in the military just sitting there staring like in disbelief, like a mannequin. Oh, there's Gobby. She's shaking up at all this and Colt is there trying to keep all the young warriors safe. Did Sophia get killed? The way Gobby said that and looked, it looks like she might be dead. Udo's upset. I don't think you're going to be able to lift that, Udo. You guys got to get out of there. I don't know if there's any saving Sophia now. She might already be a goner. I mean, she looks completely crushed, like right through the midsection. Man, to think of Aaron killing all those innocents, because that's what he did when he transformed there. Very different take on things for Aaron. Oh, so that's uh, Willie's sister there. She's the Warhammer Titan. Yes, Willie was a decoy. Let's see what this Warhammer looks like. Oh, what a beautiful transformation. Like elegant there. The flow, the posture. Oh, oh, oh he's getting a cheap shot before she can even transform. And he's got his knuckle dusters going, just pounding the semi-transformed head into the ground. But with the name like Warhammer, something tells me there's got to be a powerful punch there. Yeah, they're worried about the Warhammer. They don't know where Peak is. They don't know where uh, uh, Porco is. Don't know where Reiner is. I guess they don't even know where Zeke is. I don't know where Zeke is. I lost track along the way. Firing a rifle at Aaron's not real useful. Oh, signaling Marley's counterattack. So they seem to know a lot about the Titan here, that he's the attack Titan and the founding Titan, Aaron Yeager. The intelligence has gotten out to the military, or is that just what they picked up from the play? I don't know. Oh, save us a trip to the island. We just wipe him out now. Where's Zeke? Zeke's got to show up in all this. Oh, man, the knuckle dusters are just pounding the head into mush. And there goes whatever the... Whoa! What is that? The Warhammer just sent this great big spike up out of the ground? Is that what the Warhammer does? And the old drunk guy doesn't even know what's going on. Wow. Aaron wasn't expecting that. Did it come out of the Warhammer Titan's eye or is this some kind of alchemy? Is this suddenly turned into full metal alchemy here? That gigantic spike that just speared Aaron through the gut. Udo's not looking so good. Gobby's a little worried. It's a different side of Gobby than we've seen in the Previous five episodes. They don't know where Falco is because he's with Reiner, I guess. Down underneath the... Where, what happened to Reiner? Like, we saw him shake hands and then transform. I still don't understand exactly how that Warhammer Titan spike power worked. But it's pretty impressive. Peak and Porco trapped down there in the well. Oh, I guess these are the people that ride on Peak's back when she's the cart titan. So the Panzer unit, you know, Panzer type of tank. So they're there to maybe rescue him out of this uh, well. I don't know what else to call it. I almost called it a tunnel. Oh, they did. They did get him out of that tunnel. Okay, so Peak's going to turn into the cart titan. Oh, and he's going to go ahead and jaw titan on him, Porco. What is she looking at now? Oh, is it, is it Levi and Mikasa? <laughs> we got scouts in their Titan fighting gear. Oh, I love the design of that Warhammer Titan. Like the lines on the face. 
yeah, just making weapons out of the air here. Like the hardening factor to the extreme here with the Warhammer Titan. I wasn't expecting anything like this. Like I thought it would have to be a pretty awesome uh, power to be the Warhammer, but this surpassed anything. Like I said, it's like alchemy from Full Metal Alchemist. Bringing spikes up from the ground. No wonder this Warhammer Titan's so tough. If only uh, Aaron could make contact with the royal blood and take charge here. Uh, they're using that same anti-Titan artillery that was used in the Mideast Alliance Fort Slava battle, right? Oh, yeah, makes a point. You can't just kill the founding Titan. You've got to feed Aaron to the Warhammer Titan. That's what their goal is. Not to kill him, but to feed him to uh, Warhammer Titan over there. Oh, oh, I don't even know how Aaron wins this fight without figuring out how to use the Founding Titan power. That's the only way I can see it happening. But if Levi and Mikasa show up, they can probably uh, use some Thunder Spears on the Warhammer Titan, get that nape, let Aaron eat the Warhammer. Oh, did Aaron pull himself out of the nape for a minute? Yeah, he's pulled himself out of the nape. What's what's the deal? Is he trying to lure? Is he is he trying to use the same kind of trick like he used against Bertolt a little bit? Or that Armin used against Bertolt, lure the Warhammer Titan in, and then they swoop in and attack the nape? Aaron's holding his position. Oh, yeah, Mikasa. Let's see what her move is. Yeah, they've got like some new and improved multi- Multi Thunder Spears. They haven't been wasting their time. They've been developing new uh, technology too, it looks like. Oh, ho, ho, ho. wow. What an incredible attack. Mikasa, you haven't changed a bit. Yeah. Oh, and more scouts coming up. You guys aren't ready for a fight like this. They got nothing that compares to the scouts. And it looks like maybe they've even adapted some of that Kenny Crew gear. Wow. Look at those new uniforms, too. It's like body armor. It's almost like futuristic and sci-fi all of a sudden. I like the redesign on the scout uniforms. Oh, all about the Warhammer Titan. I'll have to read all about that. Oh, the chain of command's been broken. They've had a great attack here. So they had a counterattack to the counterattack. Everybody's playing that five-dimensional chess now. So they're bringing the fleet. I guess they're close to the shoreline in Liberia. They want Liberia surrounded while Aaron's still in there. Oh, man. Some tells me that uh, they're going to get away, though. I don't think they're going to be able to, to end it all in episode six. I feel like it's going to go on for a little bit. But yeah, it's like everybody's played into everybody's hands, and it's turned into World War Titan, World War Parody. Like, if the Great Titan War was World War I, this is like World War II, I guess. And everybody's trying to figure out what everybody else's plan is. Some pretty lethal sort of urban fighting, you know, alleyway to alleyway, building to building, street to street. But, you know, the Scout Regiment were kind of made for this, right? I mean, that's what they've been doing all through the first three seasons. Now here, I've got to see, how do I recognize these people after five years? Flock? I want to see Flock. Oh, Flock uh, doesn't have his poofy uh, hair now. His hair looks a little more, uh, you know, with it. I mean, it was also, always awesome hair, but it looks a little more with it now. Good for you, Flock. Oh, man, he's, Flock's still angry, but it looks like Flock's very loyal to Aaron here. Is that Jean he's talking to? Trying to connect the dots unless Connie grew his hair. Which, you know, I have to take him out of that bad hair category if he did that. Oh, wow. Mikasa there wondering if Aaron understands the full weight of what he's just done. How many civilians he's killed. What he's unleashed in the world, basically. Dead children. You know, the, the Aaron I knew in the first three seasons wouldn't be able to handle paying a price this high. But it looks like he's grown comfortable with it. So Aaron's hair got longer, Mikasa's got shorter. Where's Levi at? I wanna see what Levi's rocking now. Yeah, she, she blew away the nape, but that's not enough to stop the Warhammer Titan. Oh boy, 
Warhammer crossbow. Ooh! Mikasa got Aaron out of there just in time, still saving his bacon. Some things never change. Yeah, he uses that hardening power. Is Aaron going to try to learn to do something along those lines beyond the knuckle dusters? Oh, so he's really wanting to eat the Warhammer Titan, eat the, the Tiber, Lady Tiber out of the nape. Oh, wow. Colt, they're saying Udo's already dead. No room in the hospital. Colt getting turned away. Gobby in shock. Oh, man. How many people are dead now? Kind of hard for me to wrap my head around what's just happened. Like, I'm focusing on the Titan fighting and stuff because I think if I slow down and take in the full gravity of the indiscriminate death here, it's going to be a bummer. Now, I don't think I want to uh, have a bummer. Oh, they're telling Gobby to stop because she's running into the battle, but Gobby's been in war zones before. She uh, took out that armored train with a minor war crime. Something tells me that uh, Aaron and company won't be as susceptible to her tomfoolery, to her subterfuge. Yeah, you got scouts just zipping all through the sky. The scouts fight in the air, and these soldiers just aren't prepared for that. Oh, my goodness. Some violent, brutal death here. Oh, is that Sasha? She upgraded from bow and arrow to rifle? Still the ranged attack special. Hey, Connie! The hair's gotten slightly more fluffy. Oh, are those the crystal cavern lights they're using? Or have they figured out batteries at this point? Yeah, they're rigging up something to do with the lights. I guess it's for communication, beacons, something for the uh, airborne assault that these absolute special forces uh, are pulling off here. The scouts are unlike anything I think the Marleans have faced short of Reiner and Zeke. Yeah, that was Jean. Okay. So now we got to see what's up with Aaron and the Warhammer Titan and Mikasa. Yeah, this Warhammer Titan making all these weapons, I got to admit, it's super cool. I really enjoy it. I enjoy the look. I'm trying to keep myself distracted from all the, you know, dead children out there. Oh, blowing the knee away. I do like these new upgraded Thunder Spears, too, that Mikasa seems to have. But I'm not seeing any Hanji and Levi. Maybe they're back in Paradis in charge of, like, defending the, the harbor or whatever from any marine attacks. Oh, what, what are we getting here? What are we getting here? Oh, man. Come on, Mikasa. Don't get taken out here, keeping him distracted. I saw the way this went down last time, and poor Armin uh, paid the price for it. Speaking of Armin, this might not be a bad time for the Colossal Titan to show up. Oh, body form from the feet up, not from the nape. So, so here, instead of the nape, look, it's like a lifeline. Oh, oh, she's like hiding under the ground and just remote controlling the Titan. So if you cut that cord, does that cut off the Titan? Oh, Aaron's back in Titan form, so that's two transformations. Unless he's gained strength since season three, that's it for him. He's got to make it work this time around. Oh, the cocoon. That looks so much like Annie's cocoon. Can Annie do something like that with a cable? That would be devastating. Oh, he just ripped like the umbilical cord loose. Such graphic imagery. What a great Titan design. I'm so sad that this is the last Titan to be unveiled because I'm loving every time a Titan's been unveiled. But they did save, I think, the most interesting design for last. He's going to try to chomp through. That's like eating a coconut without taking the... Oh, and there's Porco. He wasn't counting on Porco and Peak. Oh, Porco thinks he's going to take Aaron out that easy. I don't think you know what you're in for, Porco. Aaron's faced a lot worse than you, I think, in the past, Porco. Maybe not. I don't know. I just don't like Porco. Oh, Levi. Yeah. You're really outmatched now, buddy. Now you're going to get it. Oh, 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 keep moving, Jaws. Keep moving. Man, I miss Amir. I miss Amir. 
Oh, he's he can't believe that like these scouts are not intimidated by a Titan. Like they could do this all day. <laughs> he doesn't understand exactly what a scout is, does he? Wow. Oh. Ah, and we don't get to see Porco get taken out. We don't get to see if Aaron manages to eat that coconut while it's still in the shell. I mean, that's like eating a walnut without taking the shell off. I don't know if his teeth would break or if he'd break through that cocoon that the Warhammer Titan's human form is in. <sighs> this show is great because this episode gave me probably the most horrific stuff we've ever seen on Attack on Titan but it kept me so distracted with such awesome action that I haven't let the, the bummerness of all the, the horrific stuff we saw soak in yet. It's like delayed. It's like I'm at a party and right now I've got my buzz and in the morning I'll have the hangover. I don't know, but well-constructed episode and it really works on that line where it tricks you into cheering the violence and overlooking this stuff that I'm gonna feel guilty about when I do the review video. I know I am, but I also acknowledged it. It, when it was going on, I said, I have to distract, like, I have to laugh so I don't cry kind of situation. But, you know, with all that, I'm just going to say I'm proud of you for watching anime, and I'll talk to you again soon. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon. It really means the world to me. If you think you might be in a position to help the channel on Patreon, there is a link in the video description. So click on that, have a little look around, and see if it's something you might be into. You get ad-free early access to reactions and reviews, along with a few small bonuses.